It's just another diagnosis. I'm a transgender woman and my dream was always to be loved and be accepted. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you and visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. Hello there. Welcome to Plus Talk on Plus Life, where we're all about turning positive into a plus. Dr. Anu is in the house. It's nice to see you, Doc. It's nice to see you too. Long time no see. Long time no see, but we talk regularly because you are my personal physician as well. I just want to make that be quite clear. So what do you want people to know when they first get their HIV diagnosis from someone like you? It's, it can't be a nice moment. Well, let me ask you, when you got the bad news, how did you feel? I felt like a digital countdown clock started over my head, counting backwards. And I thought, how could I do this to my parents? Those were the first immediate things. But I'm quite pragmatic. And then I went, okay, what do I have to do now? What do we do? It can be quite devastating, right? But in today's world, it's not too life-changing. It's, it's just another diagnosis. And that's the, I don't want people to define themselves by their illness. And we've had this talk before, right? People say that they're diabetic. You're not diabetic. You are Carl who has diabetes. And this is just another illness that has plenty of treatment options, surveillance options, and we can really control this virus. So do not define yourself by it. This isn't world ending or life changing in that matter. You can tackle it and have the strength to move forward. And so you mentioned treatment then. So when should people start treatment? As soon as possible. Can I start at the day that you give me my results? Not necessarily. You know, you do need to establish care with a physician. We need to see where you are, where how strong your immune system is. And according to that, then, and according to other illnesses that you may have, such as diabetes or kidney issues, then your doctor would prescribe certain medications for you that's safe. Right. Okay. So what does HIV treatment look like and involve these days? It's quite, it's quite simple, just like anything else. Uh, if you, you have a routine visits with your doctor, uh, they do your lab work to see how strong your immune system is and have your medications. You know, there's oral medications, there's injectables now, and I think it's quite simple. We make it harder, right? In our in our minds, right, even before, we make it a lot harder than what it actually is. Well, that's the stigma around it, you know, that we're, we're hanging on to. So what does undetectable mean? And why is it so important for somebody um, to want to achieve undetectable status as quickly as possible? So undetectable means that your viral load, so the amount of the HIV virus that can be picked up on a lab test is undetectable. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have no HIV in your body. There's, it's at such a low count that it can't be picked up on a lab test, and that means that you cannot transmit it or infect somebody else. Sexually? Yes. Right. Well, well that's, that's undetectable equals untransmittable. Yeah, or, or through, through the, the blood, blood right? right? Like right. Dry, IV drug abuse, so yeah. yeah. How often should I come and see you, my healthcare professional? when I'm now living with HIV? Um, I think it really, it depends. Initially, you're gonna have a little bit more frequent visits uh, just to s see how you're doing on medications, how your lab counts are, how your viral load is, how strong your immune system is. So I would say about every three to six months. That's, that's it? And when you're at a steady state, you know, knock on wood, at, at one point you may even, your doctor might want to just check in with you once a year. You're making it sound like HIV is very simple. Is it? At this day and age, I think it is. If you have the proper resources, you're motivated to take charge of your health. You're very what we call compliant, which means that you're, uh, you're very... You're taking your meds as you should. Exactly. At, now... I've heard different things. I take my medicine every morning, but sometimes on the bottle it will say take before bed. Is there a perfect time of the day to take your med, or is it more important to take it consistently at the same time every day? It depends on the medication. So I think the answer is both. So certain medications would have certain side effects. So if, uh, if the, a certain side effect is fatigue, then that's why it's recommended to take it before bedtime so you can be the best that you can be during the daytime.
But in general, yes, it is also important to take it around the same time every day. What happens if I miss one dose? What happens, like I travel a lot, right? Different time zones and, and it's hard to adhere. If, if I miss just one dose, how bad is that? Not too bad, but you need to get back on the regimen. And I would say this is where the next set of counts are going to be important. So if you miss one dose, not necessarily going to make a huge effect. But at the end of the day, if you're going to miss like two or three doses, then you may, that viral count that was initially undetectable, may have a little bit, a blip. Now, and this might sound over simple. If I miss a dose, should I take two tablets next time to catch up or just take one? I would just continue to take one. Switch gears a bit with this and talk about mental health side of things. Because as we said at the top, an HIV diagnosis is a big bit of news. Maybe it shouldn't be in this day and age, but it still is, um, t to take on board, no matter how old you are or what your circumstances are. So should we be considering therapy or speaking to a professional from a mental health perspective as well as the physical side of things to take care of our HIV? I think it's important, but that's also person dependent too. So if you're very, if you're a very pragmatic person that it's, it wasn't devastating for you and, and you think of it as just another diagnosis, okay, fine, you need to go to the doctor and your mental health and your strength, the inner strength is, is fine. That's, you're gonna be the best judgment of that. So if you're tackling it, you're tackling the diagnosis, you're tackling all of this, especially of what's going on with you, absolutely reach out and find a therapist or a mental health provider that can guide you through this process. Um, and so that you can maintain your happiness and your strength as well. And it's not just, and let me just put this, we always, we always think about the patient, but it's not just for the patients, but your loved ones too, because it can be tough for loved ones as well, right? What are the, that, speaking of that, so what are the first steps I should take to make sure my sexual partners are also being protected? As far as, well, I think the first step is making sure that you're on the current treatment regimen, right? Asking them to be tested to see what their status is. And then two is getting yourself in with a provider and getting on that treatment regimen so that you can become undetectable. And that way you're protecting your partner. Are there any things that we should do in our daily lives once we get that HIV diagnosis um, that, that we should focus more on as far as just being healthier? I remember my diagnosis, I was like, Right, I'm never drinking again, and I'm never going to do this again, and that again, and this again. Um, not realistic for me. Um, but is, is are there certain lifestyle changes you would recommend people really make to help? I'm glad that you asked me this question, right? And I, I think this goes questions. Yeah, I mean, that's why we're here. I think this goes back to my initial conversation with you is this is just at this point in age this is just another diagnosis so I'm going to tell you that whatever I tell somebody else that has diabetes or kidney disease or not even any illness is going to be just lead a healthy lifestyle get your sleep exercise don't smoke you know like all the normal things that you would do to just maintain a healthy lifestyle now, I would say the only specific consideration is it depends on how strong your immune system is. So if your counts are really down and your immune system is quite weak, then you need to take additional measures. So eating safe foods, right? Not, not eating uh, uncooked or unpasteurized foods. Try not to put yourself, you know, during the pandemic, we were talking about safe hygienic measures. So doing that so you don't you're not at increased risk of getting any foodborne or any environmental illnesses while your immune system is a little bit weak. That's the only difference that I would state. But other than that, it's the same advice that I give everybody. Get out there and live your life. Yes. Take care of yourself. Dr. Anud, thank you very much. That is going to do it for this episode of Plus Talk. If you want more information, check out the website, pluslifemedia.com. And don't forget, you can like, follow, share our social medias at Plus Life Media. Until next time, as the good doctor says, wash your hands and be nice to one another. See ya.